All right, we are back. Uh, video number two of this series. Uh, where we last left off is we deployed a Flask app that was uh, outputting Hello World and being hosted in a virtual environment uh, on our local host, port 5000. So what I have today is I've prepared a bunch of code to make the video a little bit shorter so you can focus on the actual code itself. And then I'm gonna walk through the code and I'll explain what we did and how everything works. You can go out to the GitHub in the description right now if you, if you want to pause the video. You can download all of these files. I'll have a link to a folder on GitHub that will have us, um, and that way you can kind of follow through if you'd like. Go ahead and pause now. Link is in the description. And once you get everything set up, uh, come on back. All right. Um, so first off, we this is a, a newly updated app file, but let's not start here. Let's go ahead and uh, start with our main HTML. Uh, so we are using Bootstrap here, and we are also using a Glyphicon or a, an Icon uh, CDN Font Awesome. Very great service. You guys should check them out. Um, you can. I'll have a link to their website as well as Bootstrap in the description as well. We have our necessary jQuery and JavaScript as well as uh, Ajax that we'll use in future videos. Um, basically, this is our metadata here. Um, so this is, this is this is the information that we're normally going to have at the beginning of every uh, HTML uh, page. Uh, but for the sake of that, what we're doing is we're only putting it on one page. That way, we don't need to uh, reproduce this, reproduce this if we ever make a change to our metadata description or add some tags, um, or if the Bootstrap CDN needs to be updated or something like that. We don't need to update 100 pages. You can update it one place, and you don't you don't have to uh, worry about updating other. Uh, HTML pages. So we have this uh, for Flask, we have this uh, very small HTML block here. This is going to tell Flask, here is our div. This is where we're going to start the content. This is where we're going to end the content. All right, we have our header. So he here I went out to Bootstrap. Uh, we can take a look. If you go out to the, you know, click the Bootstrap link in the description. And if we type here nav bars, it'll give us a really good tutorial on bootstrap nav bars and we've selected one of these uh, we, we've kind of made some changes on the, the coloring but basically uh, i selected this removed the search kind of altered this added a, a sign up and a login uh, to my nav bar uh, which you should see if you're following along um well we have our basically title of the website example of flask we have our home a uh, link to our home page link to about page uh, off to the right nav bar right here off to the right, we're going to have our sign up where people can sign up to our website. Uh, we're going to have a login. So if you already have an account with us, you can enter your login credentials. Um, and then from a Flask point of view, to link to these other pages, here is the notation. So if, you, if I was to click on home, we have our welcome. So this is basically where we're going to put in, uh, if we go back to our app, we have this welcome right here. And this is telling Flask what template to render when someone clicks on that link. So if I go back to my header, so uh, if, if I was to click on home, and we'll, we'll go through this on the actual page, but I just want to walk through the syntax here. Um, if we were to click on home, it's going to tell Flask, um, follow, use this welcome function, and uh, render this template. Take us to home.html, and then it's going to out basically run this here. So this is, this is our homepage. This is the, the body or the meat of the website. Uh, what it's saying is uh, start, insert, main.html code, which is all of this. Um, and then begin your block content. And then within the block content, um, we're going to start by inserting this code. And then now, this is where you can freeform the, the body of your, your website. So here, I've gone out to Bootstrap. I've taken an example of Jumbotron. You can type that in the search here. And what we've done is we copied this right here. We updated the text that it actually has on it. Um, just It's just some canned can stuff. We'll come right back to that eventually. And in block. So to go back to our um, our header. And then, so that, that explains home. That's how you, you'll navigate back and forth to home. We have an about page. So here, very similar. Same thing as the home. I just changed the, you know, it's the, it's the Jumbotron uh, can text. I just changed some stuff. 
um, so the header, and then for our for our login, we have here. So as you can see, for sign up, we don't have anything. We haven't created a sign up page. But for login, we've created a login page, so we're going. We need to necessarily log. So this isn't linking to login.html. This is linking to the app.py. So we need to find in login right here. So it's going to run this right here. So in the event that you needed to expand on this code, uh, do any kind of user-based uh, routing, if the user's already logged in, you might want to load one thing. If the user's not logged in, follow a different set of script and so forth. And we're, we're going to show that on our next video. It might be video number four. All right. So going back, so we've got our main. We dis we discussed. We've got our header. Uh, we're using Bootstrap. We've got our home, just a very basic block that's going to show up underneath our header. We've got our about page. Uh, and now let's go over our login page. So we do have a style sheet here. Uh, so just like just like the about and the the home page, we, we're going to copy this this code because we don't. There's no need to reproduce main and header. You kind of want to have it in one place. That way, whenever you make updates, you only make update in one place, and then it's going to trickle down to all other pages that are that are using that. So this right here, we'll discuss this once we set up our user authentication. Uh, next video, we'll be discussing building the backend database using uh, Postgre, uh, SQL. And our fourth video, we're going we're gonna to go over handling user authentication. We'll create an admin. We'll create a guest user, uh, allow people to log into the site, and they'll see, certain, they'll see different things based on uh, if they're logged in or not. But for today's video, we have our basic login form. I've created a style sheet here. Let me go back here. So we're, we're telling it here to use this style sheet. And then we're down here, we're just saying in block. So if we go back to our app, just to go over this one more time. Uh, what we've added here under welcome. So whenever welcome gets invoked, uh, let's find it here. So whenever someone's clicking on home, um, we've given it three different uh, kind of URLs or addresses. Um, we allowed to said localhost 5000, localhost 5000 slash welcome, or localhost 5000 slash home. So this is how you would determine, like if you want to use multiple, um, this isn't the best way to do redirects or anything like that, but essentially that's what it's doing right here. Um, so it's going to return this, this template. Uh, one thing I've got down here, app.run.debug.true. So this will allow us, once we're in our environment and the, the Python, uh, or you run pi, app.py, it's running, your server or your virtual environment's up. Uh, this will allow you to make changes on the fly and it show up in your uh, app on your browser. All right. Um, we've got a logout. This, like I said, this will be used in the future. But for today, we've got um, about. Register will be used in the future. Right now, it's, there's no use to that. But the main ones are home, login, and about. All right, that's good. And now let's go out to our environment. Actually, let's go ahead and uh, deactivate that. Um, start fresh. So what we want to do is dot slash env slash scripts slash activate. We're now in our environment. Uh, we can see, make sure what we got here. We got our app.py. We got our static folder, which is going to contain our style, and our templates folder, which is going to contain our um, HTML pages. So make sure your directory mimics this once you copy everything. All right, so we're going to run py. And I am, remember, I'm using Python 3.7. py.app.py. All right, we're up and running. Let's go check this out. Uh, let's hit refresh. All right, so we are home. This is our Jumbotron right here, our basic can text. We got our about page, which is also Jumbotron. We got our nav bar here, which consists of the example of Flask, home, about, sign up, and login. We click on login. Now, as you can see, now we've got our form, username, password, that allows it to collect. Uh, this blue in the background, all the coloring, everything is being handled by our style.css. Um, right now, if we click login, obviously nothing's going to happen. Um, so that that errors out, but in future videos that will be set up and we will be rocking and rolling. Uh, in the event that you do make changes to your CSS while this app is running, I believe it's Shift Control R 
And what that does is that'll that'll clear your cache. I was having issues with that recently. I was making changes, you know, um, I was able to make changes to Python and the HTML, and they're being reflected real time, which with this just a simple refresh here. Uh, but the CSS wasn't refreshing. So to uh, clear the cache of your browser CSS, you need to hit Shift, Control, and R, um, and then what, then you'll have, your site will be reflected. So if you got your app running, you're over here, and you're on the styles, and you're making you know tweaks, which as I imagine you would, because you probably don't want your website looking like this unless you start put your final touches on it. Um, all right, I hope that was useful. Uh, this was a different approach to kind of give you a uh, copy all of the code up front instead of having to type it out manually and follow along and be like a 45 minute to an hour long video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, put those down below. If you enjoy the video, if you learned something from the video, feel free to like it or subscribe to it. Um, and I hope you guys have a good day. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. Like I said, it's gonna be based on the building the database uh, using Postgre. And, uh, and then the following video is when we're going to get into the user authentication and so forth. All right. Thanks so much.